Hello everybody, here what you can see, this is the Canon EOS R6, finally I have it on my review. And here we see the camera itself, the charger, of course the cables and the battery to this uh, camera. Unfortunately we don't see any uh, EF RF adapter. I have some doubts uh, concerning its body because it feels quite plasticky. Uh, it reminds me of Canon RP, so not for this money. Now I'm touching both cameras and what I can say you that Canon EOS R feels more solid. It's definitely not plastic. The back panel looks more like from DSLR Canon cameras because it has the joystick and uh, all the buttons that uh, people are used to. The EOS R and the EOS R6. As for the grip, uh, the bolts are very nice because it's Canon, it's handy, but what, what I can say that R6 seems a little more uh, like fat and bulky, but just a little, tiny bit. The outer elements on the Canon EOS R uh, feel uh, cold, whereas on the R6 uh, they feel uh, like not, not warm, but uh, well, they just feel plasticky. From this field of view you can notice how the light shines uh, on the Canon EOS R. You definitely see that it's metal and how uh, the handle looks on the R6. It's the same story as with the um, RF mount lenses, because Canon uh, doesn't quite uh, uh, advertise this. They don't draw, draw attention to the fact that the new RF lenses are made of plastic. Uh, that's one of the things that I don't like. Because I have lots of EF mount lenses and they're mostly, if you take uh, the highest uh, L series, they're made of metal. The inside of the body is made of the magnesium alloy, but outer uh, components made of plastic in the new Canon uh, R6. Concerning the battery, it's, uh, well, you can use the older batteries from the, starting from Canon 5D Mark III, Mark IV or the Canon EOS R, but the R5 and R6 have um, newer LPE6 and H uh, batteries that uh, last uh, longer and are suited for those bodies. What is also important that the new batteries, I mean LPE6 and, and NH, they both support the charge via USB port. Whereas the older, just LPE6 from, uh, for example, uh, 5D Mark III, from Mark IV, they don't support the charge via USB. Just in my old LPE6 battery, it works uh, fine and correctly, so no problems with it. If we compare two screens side by side, we can see that the EOS R has larger screen. Please uh, don't mind their brightness because the settings on the R6 was for the brightness was a bit higher, that's all. I think that the, the bigger the screen is, the better. So in this aspect, this camera is uh, just a bit abridged. This is one of the small things where they show you that uh, you should look at the R5 because it has bigger screen. What I instantly see that how many menu items uh, there are. The R6 has uh, nine of them, whereas the R has only uh, six. These are the video modes in the R6, not many of them, as you see. The menu is in Russian, so I'll skip this uh, part of the video. Here you can see that uh, the R6 has dual card slots and the R has only one card slot. All the cards are just uh, SD cards. From the back side, uh, we see the use R6 reminds us of, about the DSLR cameras and the R has new red design that is not so appraised uh, by, the, by the most of Canon users. Although I'm totally used to Canon LSR and I don't regret uh, the absence of the joystick and the wheel, but I know that many people, they just want a joystick. Camera without joystick is nothing for them. Same with, with that wheel. Well, the R6, you have that, but you have to pay the extra thousand dollars <laughs> for those things. Because as far as for the image quality, we'll talk later. You'll be surprised. The plugs are the same, and they're just positioned a bit different. What is different is the HDMI size. And the R has a bigger HDMI, and the R6 as well, the R5 has micro HDMI, and uh, truly speaking, this is a fail such a small HDMI and top, uh, top of the line uh, Canon bodies. You can also see small differences in the eye cup and the R6 has a rubber and a pressable eye cup, whereas the R has more solid eye cup. 
a significant change is the absence of the shutter lag. So this camera shoots instantly. You don't have any lagging that is usual for all the mirrorless cameras. Uh, it's, it feels more like DSLR. So you shoot and you instantly see the picture and you have no blackout. Uh, this will be very comfortable for those people who are used to shooting with DSLRs. So these models, um, I mean, uh, R5 and R6, uh, they are made for this transition. Uh, for the people that are, aren't used to the mirrorless cameras, they, they take this in their arms and they just uh, go and shoot and they don't have to change themselves as it was with the Canon EOS R. The speed of the eye sensor has also changed, so the R6 um, reacts faster than the R. Now I'm going to talk about the quality of the video and then the quality of the photo because as far as the video goes, all the people want to know um, how sharp it is and whether it's it way better than the EOS R or it's the same. We'll see that right now. Wait a second, I will show you something unpleasant. The R6 is uh, crippled because they didn't allow us to use um, AV and TV modes. So in uh, while video shooting, same as in Canon RP, you can only use auto mode or um, manual mode. Well, you can put, of course, auto ISA, but in general, it's only auto and manual. This camera has a slight crop in 4K. It's not big, it's like 5%, but it is there. Now I'm going to show you my tests for the autofox. You see uh, the Canon EOS R on the right and the R6 on the left. And when I move, when, well, you can check how it focuses, how faster than the R it is or the same they are, you can see it by yourselves. What I also noticed is the difference in uh, exposing because uh, I had the, both cameras in manual and you see that the R6 is darker and the R is lighter. All the settings are totally the same, but this difference in exposition uh, seems, well, surprising to me. And uh, by the way, the same thing I saw in R5 uh, in photo mode. And indeed, you see the change in crop modes. Now we test the sensor stabilization on the R6 and to my eye, it is not satisfying. I don't know why, but the R5 performed way better. This video to me looks uh, quite jerky. This is a rolling shutter test, which is uh, similar to ELSA R as for me. And now we can check the sharpness. This is uh, R6 in 4K. Here you see the Canon EOS R, how sharp it is or how, how sharp it is not. Now we check the Full HD mode. Uh, because in most tests they show you only 4K and well it was really important for me and uh, friends of mine to see whether, whether the, four, the Full HD on the R6 is better and uh, I must admit it is better. The Full HD on the R isn't bad either, but if you compare them side by side you'll notice that the R6 is more detailed. It looks more like uh, Fuji or Sony cameras. Now we check the slow motion test. And I would say that this quality is okay, but it's not stellar. You can see aliasing on the top of on those electricity li lines on the top of the frame. There they come like just small bricks. Now we check the Full HD slow motion. And now the most important of the image quality between the R and the R6. In order to open those files, you need the Lightroom for version 9.4 and above. Let's zoom in 
and ISO 100 and try to push the exposure two steps above and well we, we can see that it's quite clean same as three steps above you barely can see uh, degradation well at four steps indeed there, there are some problems in shadows but truly speaking I wouldn't do this in any situation five steps and still uh, you may call it usable but only if you do this at ISO 100 because uh, the higher the ISO the more problems you have now we try shadows you see that pushing shadows is uh, well a little we see a little degradation I have tested the Canon EOS R now we have the same lens and it's 24 to 70 f2 L USM RF mount and now we push the R6 we'll check uh, what about the quality and the dynamic range uh, on this camera if you put two stops exposure uh, well you can see noise if you put put uh, simultaneously shadows and exposure but again i wouldn't do this in in any conditions it's not correct to to do such things if we push three stops of ex exposure there is some noise but still you can uh, correct this with noise reduction at five type stops of exposure indeed there are some problems but it's not normal to do such things now i try what if we uh, if you overexpose and you correct this image um, and you try to compensate this uh, in post editing well some uh, highlights are, are still clipped so <laughs> there are no miracles and magic if you uh, overexpose too much no camera will uh, forgive you this i check the overexposed zones and the, and the and the iso 100 but the original file was better so it's a normally exposed uh, image if we overexpose too much we will lose those highlights uh, totally and now i will show you this at iso 100 if you uh, well, in these zones it is quite okay. Indeed, there is no noise at ISO 100, but the clipped zones are, well, they are clipped. No way you can save them if you overexpose too much. Because some people think that if you buy something like R6 or, or R5, uh, they will do miracles and the dy dynamic range will be uh, divine and gorgeous. But uh, what I have noticed in these two cameras is that they're pretty similar. What you pay over when you buy R6, it's, well, it's more like er er ergonomics and overall feeling. But uh, in terms of uh, the raw quality, to my eye they seemed uh, quite similar what is different that the uh, Canon R has more noise but it also has more detail so the R6 files well they're only 20 megapixels so they're, they have less details but they also seem to me like with an applied noise reduction out of camera applied noise reduction yes indeed the uh, Canon R files look more noisy now but uh, but the R6 file, uh, it has less details, so you, you can achieve the same result if you just apply post-noise uh, post reduction. Oh, well, I look into the dark uh, areas and now they look quite similar if you push the exposure back. And now we see what I've told you before, that the, R, uh, that the Canon EOS R has better details the image is sharper and it has yes indeed it has more noise i repeat myself but this is important because overall this image looks better to me so what are my overall impressions about the canon r6 even before this review i knew that the r6 is a bit crippled by the canon because so we know that there is the r5 camera in general, as a Canon R user, I would say that I'm not impressed and I don't feel like upgrading to R6. I don't feel such necessity to upgrade immediately. But if I would do the upgrade, I would buy the R5. 
The R6 reminds me too much of the Canon RP and I dislike Canon RP, it feels too cheap to me but when you have to pay like $3000 for a cheap product the R6 feels cheap to me and that is why well I feel that this is not my camera in any way and uh, that crippled video mode, that plastic uh, body I would wait until the price for the R5 drops but uh, the R6 uh, just passes, uh, passes by. But I know people who are totally satisfied and happy with it. So it's a matter of personal taste and it's up to you. That's all. See you soon. Bye.